welcome to uh, Dartmoor and to the Meldon car park, Meldon Reservoir car park, which is just over that rise, over the air here, the side of that silver car. It's a beautiful day. It's quite chilly. Um, it's warmer here than it was when I left home. It was about minus three, something like that. Minus four when I left home. It's about six or seven degrees here now, but that'll fall off fairly quickly. climb now up and around the uh, shoulder of this hill and get to probably about 80 90 percent of the way up and then it takes a gradual turn bend round to the right and from there it's, it's just pretty much straightforward straight on to Black Tour. to two o'clock now so I've got uh, about two and a bit hours till sunset and uh, about a mile and a quarter I think to go to the pitch so I can just take my time really and I have taken a bit of a risk today I've left my Nikon D800 at home a big 36 megapixel monster because it's so heavy and I'm carrying so much gear because because uh, this is my first winter camp so I'm carrying more winter weather gear and I've brought along the Nikon D5500 now I have bought myself an additional piece of equipment today at great expense £4.99 from Argos and I decided that my cold weather sleep system was not quite there so, because uh, the ground's going to be cold, so I did buy myself a normal roll-up sleep mat, which I kind of turned my nose up at before because I have a, a quite nice OEX, I think it is, um, lightweight self-inflating mat, a mummy-shaped one. But uh, I just wanted a little bit more insulation from the ground. A little bit more protection there. So over there, I think that is High Will Hayes, Will Hayes, whatever they call it. And, uh, and then to the left of that, just above where that valley starts to turn to the crossing the valley here and going up the shoulder of it there in the near foreground you can see these red and white marker posts and that's the edge of the military training area. So looking directly ahead here, uh, head in the path, almost in a straight line now is Black Tor, that's where I'm headed. About, it's about three quarters of a mile or so, so uh, it's half past two. Should certainly make that by three o'clock. There's plenty of time to set up. I might even get a sunset tonight. I'm not sure it's going to be much of a sunset because there's not a lot of cloud action. You never know. Um, I'm going to be ready 
for it this time, if there is. a great conversation there with a lady uh, I just filmed walking away I sorry I forgot to get your name madam uh, but I remember your dog's name and that was Poppy promised to include you in the video but what a lovely conversation uh, I uh, really do like it when I meet people on these walks and uh, just get to talk about what it is that I'm doing a little bit about what they're doing as well off the path there for a while because it basically turned into something of a ice rink and what I'm on here isn't a great deal better it's sort of frozen marshy boggy stuff so I've reached the tour that is black tour almost at the summit it's quite a boulder field so I'm going to do well to find a flat pitch. So that's what I'm going to concentrate on now. Find somewhere to put the tent. It's not long till the sun's going to dip behind that hill and then it's going to start to get a bit colder. set up for the night <sighs> took a little while and it looks like we might have some mist rolling in there over the horizon some low cloud or mist one or the other there's really not a lot of sunset action going on so I haven't got the camera out yet but I've just got a wonderful pitch here it's right at the top of the the middle tour nice little flat space it's soft but yeah, the, uh, the sunset's just sort of fading to a bit of a dull, fairly dull grey. I might take a shot or two, but there's not an awful lot happening. And in a minute, I'm going to have a cup of tea once all that colour has gone out of the sky. So I've had an interesting evening. Um, tonight I've been out and about doing some astrophotography, which was a nice surprise to be able to do that, because I really thought it was just going to be really misty. Uh, tonight but the mist is all in the valleys I mean that was one of the possibilities I considered um, but and I think I've got one or two nice shots but it has been a bit frustrating because of a couple of things um, firstly I decided to bring my D500 and really the D800 would have been the right camera for this um, I also um, because of the last minute change of mind to bring the D5500 I, um, I left behind the remote for it so I had to resort to using the phone Wi-Fi connection to the to the D5500 um, whereas I would normally just use my um, my cable release for the D800 which would have been a lot easier um, the other problem that the D5500 has is it has no idea how to focus 
in the dark. It certainly can't focus on stars. No cameras can really. Um, but I was trying to get it to focus on the foreground and um, and it just wasn't having it really. So uh, so I've tried so many shots to try and get a sharp foreground and uh, it's almost impossible because you're having to use a wide open aperture. It's dark. Um, I just had to go right through the, um, the focus range, as opposed to focal range, uh, to see whether or not I could just get a sharp foreground shot and, um, and I'm not really happy that I managed to do that with any of them. But I think compositionally uh, I had a really nice shot and um, I'm just hoping and praying that, uh, that it comes out okay. Well, I was a bit surprised. I was just joined by a little friend in here, a little furry friend, a little field mouse, decided to show up. Must have got in a tent earlier when I'd left it open at some point. And um, it obviously decided as I was going to settle down for the night that it was time for it to escape and to leave. So um, it decided to go um, after a little bit of chasing around. There you go, didn't expect company tonight, but it's life, isn't it? That was really a um, long night, very, very windy, which was a surprise because there was hardly a breath of wind when I went to, to bed last night. And um, it's blown away all that nice uh, morning mist that I had rather hope would be out there. It's probably going to be um, a very blue sunrise this morning there's not going to be a lot of cloud action up there I don't think so um, I'm going to make a cup of tea and uh, pack a few things away and then get ready to uh, do one or two shots it will only be one or two and I'm going to have to choose very carefully because I've got almost no camera battery left and uh, batteries really have not enjoyed the cold weather and they just seem to have lasted a fraction of their normal time so I think that answers the whole question about what's the best camera to bring on these trips. It's, despite the weight, um, it's got to be the D800. I just came across this little pool here, frozen absolutely solid. This will give you some sort of idea of how cold it's been last night. <laughs> and it was a cold night, I've got to say. had pretty much, I was wearing pretty much everything that was in my bag that I could wear. So it's dark still over there because it's overcast. There's a little bit of colour in the sky over this way so I've taken a photograph or two of that but where the sun has been rising over here uh, it's just not really been happening at all. Shame. It just goes to show that it, it pays to stick around because suddenly some colour has come out of nowhere in the sky. I've come down the hill a bit, I've found these nice frost covered rocks here. It's beautiful, and these long grasses in front of them. This, this is the shot, so I'm going to get on with this. I've got to work quickly now. yet or anything to eat so it's time to do that it was like someone just suddenly 
gave me the keys to the sweetie shop photographically and said, go on in, fill your boots. <laughs> so I did. And it's just been absolutely brilliant. Uh, I just hope that the uh, shots do it justice. I'm, I'm more concerned now that I've used the D5500 instead of the D800 because I know I know the D800 backwards, but I'm not complaining. It, <laughs> it's just been a brilliant little, brilliant little trip. It's just absolutely been worth it. Not one of these trips um, has failed to surpass my expectations yet. Just the advantages of being in these places in the right place at the right moments. It, it just makes so much difference. You just get shots that you're not going to get any other way. I really do need a taller screen for this cooking stove. Driving me nuts. Still got a bit of milk left which I hope isn't freezing. And I brought with me my thermos mug because I have found that um, when you make a cup of tea in one of these pans Apart from the fact that it's just not very satisfying to drink out of a pan, um, you tend to find that uh, it goes cold really quickly, and that's not satisfying either. up and ready to go. This is where I was camping, just a bit of flattened grass there. It's a good little spot actually, highly recommend this. And a nice sheltered little spot, quite soft ground. I don't think I'm going to take any photographs because I have tried before and it's actually a really really difficult subject to photograph when you're in it. Um, there's lots of interesting things in it and it's just uh, another worldly place again but um, I think it's the sort of place that's going to look best on video. This is Blackator Cops and uh, an ancient oak woodland, it's quite rare and uh, just an amazing place really. As we get in there I'll show you some of the features. It's really quite special. No camping allowed in there, quite rightly. It's a bit of a laugh that says there's no camping in here because <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to see someone try. Wow, look at this place, it's just extraordinary. So we're nearly there. I really couldn't walk past that waterfall without at least trying to photograph it, but I'm afraid I'm out of time. I've got to get back and I probably haven't really done it justice. 
ideally I'd have got my big stopper out and uh, just tried to really slow it down. I did stick the polarizer on, uh, so that cut down a couple of stops, I guess. And I did reduce the ISO to 100. Uh, so I think I managed, I probably managed to get to about an eighth of a second okay. Um, but uh, it was complaining a little bit about highlights. So uh, we'll see, we'll see. And compositionally, I didn't, I'm not sure I really nailed it, but if I put it up, let me know what you think. So that's dangerous enough, that's level. But then, look at the path ahead. And it goes downhill and it's icy, that's gonna be fun. So I'm really glad I've got my pole with me. And I'm using it. It was a good decision to bring up. Enjoy the last of these views because I think this is probably it now. So thanks for watching. Probably going to be quite a long video given how much footage I've taken. It's been a great evening and morning. Got some unexpected shots. Well, not entirely unexpected. But I'm really, I think I'm going to be pleased with what I do have. I've taken far too many photographs and far too much video. Don't know what I'm going to do with it all. Thanks for watching. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. See you in the next one. Thank you.